Okay, so now I've got my base models, uh, I'm going to take them over to Blender to make a base texture. So I need to export these separately. So I'm going to right click, not right click, sorry. Uh, I'm going to select my low can there and do file, export, and I'll just do a wavefront OBJ and I'll export it here. You see, I've uh, already, done, already done it. So uh, what you want is selected only and objects. Uh, so that will only uh, export this low poly one here. So I'll export that and then select the high one and file and whoops, export OBJ. And this time I'll do the high one. Again, selection only, uh, only objects and export. Okay, so now if I go over to Substance Painter, uh, I can import or oh, start a new project. So it's file, new, uh, I'll leave it at 2048. I want my normal map format to be OpenGL uh, because that's what, um, well, essentially that's what Blender uses. There we go. And I'll go to select and I'll select my low object. Uh, everything else here is fine, so I'll just click OK and that should start me off. Now, uh, I did bake the, uh, the normals in Blender because I wanted to show you how to do that, uh, but actually Substance does a much better job. Uh, so let me go to the texture sets and then the uh, bake maps. And under the bake mesh maps, in the common section, I'm going to select my high def mesh. So if I click there and I'll select my uh, can high and I've got a max and uh, front and rear distance uh, but generally speaking everything works quite well at default here and everything else should be okay so let's bake those textures so that's going to bake through and it's going to kind of rebake that um, normal map and give us a, a result so as you can see now, we're looking at our low poly model, but I've got a nicely defined rim around the top there and everything looks smooth, except, you know, at the edges where, you know, we can't really hide that. Not with a normal map anyway. Okay, so that's our initial setup. Let's go and have a look at our maps. Let me put this to the 3D only view. There we go. So. Uh, we have our normal map, that's what it looks like, looks pretty good. And what else have we got? Uh, la, la, la. We want the ambient occlusion, there shouldn't be much on that. There's a little around the top look uh, where that little rim is. It's helping to enhance that. Uh, curvature, yep, so we've got our black and white areas where, you know, we have our positive, positive and negative curvature. Uh, everything else is grey because pretty much, you know, the entire thing is curved and everything is, you know, going to be even in that respect. Uh, position, that's not really going to show us too much. And thickness, that gives us a little bit. And uh, other, we don't want other. We're quite happy now. Okay, so all our maps are baked. And now what we want to do is create a generic... Um, texture which we're going to use for the base of our variants so we're going to make a generic can um, with a few details on it but nothing too much um, to use as the base for all of our variant uh, models and textures so I will talk to you in the next section okay so I'm going to go back to our material view so from here, um, generally speaking, and I'm looking at a, a can now, uh, one of my awful iced coffees. Um, yeah, the top is metallic, the bottom is metallic, but the, the main body of the, the can is, you know, um, it's metallic, but it's painted and it's not, you know, quite as reflective and shiny. So we want to replicate that a little bit. So let's go to our layers and delete this one. And I'm going to create a couple of areas. So two folders. And we'll have one as uh, metal 
and one has I would call it painted for want of a better word and then we can control these differently but I need maps to uh, put on these so I'm going to add a black mask on each and then switch to the fill tool let's go over to our um, 2d 3d view there we go and press F to focus uh, so this bit and this bit I want to be metal and this bit I don't so if I switch to the mask view I can now just make sure I'm adding these in so I'll switch to the chunk uh, fill so that will make life quicker there we go so that's my top and bottom and then for the painted again need to switch to the mask view and then I'll select that bit there so there we go so within our uh, metal area let's switch back over to material uh, I'm just going to pick the default aluminium because that seems like a relatively sensible thing to do now that I think about it there we go and yeah, we can see that that's applied looks a, maybe a bit too shiny but we'll deal with that as we go along and for the painted um, we're just going to pick you know um, the same thing but we're going to adjust it a little bit to uh, make it a little bit less uh, shiny so let's drag and drop that onto there there we go and then we'll slide down and I'm going to take the roughness up just to simulate that there is you know there is some um, difference between the top and the bottom I'm not going to change the color just yet we'll change the color uh, in another layer so that's uh, fairly generic and not very exciting uh, so we're going to uh, add a little detail and we're going to uh, paint on um, some something to simulate a label it's not going to look exactly like a label because we're not going to see this close up I don't want to be able to read it I don't want to be able to read the ingredients I just want it to look like it's got that on it uh, so we'll start that off in the next section talk to you then okay so one of the first jobs I want to do is just to do a little bit um, on the the top here so because it's a used drink can obviously it's going to be open so we're going to open it up um, but we're also going to draw a couple of little uh, a little a couple of little details in so let's add a paint layer and then I just want opacity selected I need my opacity to be down to black uh, so with a brush I've got let's pick the basic hard I want to change the alpha out and I want the alpha to be uh, it's a water droplet somewhere where's that gone oh I'm in the brushes that's why there we go a water droplet so I can scale this up get into a top view just scale it up until it's you know about right I think it should be a little less than that and then click and now we have a drink shaped kind of hole which is uh, quite handy okay so uh, I'm going to turn opacity off and then turn height on now and switch my brush over to uh, just the standard uh, basic soft and now I want to just drop my height a little bit and then whoops didn't mean to do that uh, we'll add in just a little kind of indent somewhere around there I just need to make that straighter so if you want to do a straight line click where you want to start and press shift and just move your mouse and then click down and that will add that in so another little um, thing I want to do here is put uh, a little indent around and I think we could perhaps do that with a bit of a layer so let's pick a layer and add a black mask to it and so for this mask I want uh, to add a generator and the generator I'll select 
is the UV border. So let's, uh, la, 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 what do we want? Uh, let's go to the mask view. There, now we can adjust it down to what we want. So I'm gonna take it right, 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 right down. Somewhere around there. And I'm gonna increase the contrast so it's a little sharper. Perhaps move the distance a bit. And then the smoothness to bring it inwards. There we go. Okay, so because this is within this folder, it's only going to show up um, within this area. So it's going to put it on the bottom as well, which I'm not unhappy about. So let's go back to our, our material view and select the material itself. And I'm going to turn off, I might leave rough on. There we go. So now I can control the height of that uh, within that mask. So you can see I can bring it up, drop it down, bring it up, drop it down as I want to, just to add a little more detail. It's a little bit rough, um, that's okay. Uh, I'm gonna kind of increase the roughness on that just to give it a little bit of sense of something and on the UV distance thing let's zoom in let's see if we can tidy that up a bit uh, so if I increase the smoothness and down the contrast it should start to at least uh, soften up a bit and take some of that harshness out uh, let's go back to material there we go yeah a little bit and I could also add a filter above that for blur and just take that down a little bit. I don't want it to be too blurred out. I don't want it to be completely invisible. Um, but I also, you know, don't want it to be too jaggedy. There we go. So we should have a little rim around the top and the bottom now. There we go. If you wanted to, you know, do more on this top to, you know, make it a bit more interesting you know uh, add a, a you know a couple of things then you know feel free we can always uh, you know go back but as I said I'm, uh, I'm just doing kind of a prototype here uh, to start off all our variants okay so next we'll add a label to the back a typical label that you might see on a drinks can you know whereby it's got the nutritional information the ingredients how many calories it's got etc etc Okay, so I'll talk to you then. Okay, so first thing I want to do is add some label to the back. And this is this label will be on all of our can variants. Um, but I don't want to have to do it 100 times. So let's do it once and be done with it. So I want some text essentially down here. So let's add above everything a uh, fill layer. Now I'm doing it with a fill because some of my cans are going to be dark, some are going to be light, and I want the text to be changeable. And I can't do that if I paint it, uh, but I can do it if I paint it through a black mask. So we'll add a black mask and then add a paint layer. There we go. And I want to use a font. So within our alphas, I'll just type in font and pick out this fairly generic one here. Now, do I want to write loads and loads of text? No, I really don't. Um, and that's where the lorem ipsus, is it lorem ipsus? Uh, Ipsum generator comes along. Uh, so I've done a search for one and found a generator. And if I just press this button here, it will go away and generate me some text, uh, all of which is, uh, you know, non-readable um, unless it's an actual language that I don't understand maybe Latin I don't know <coughs> and I'm going to come back to my painter and in the font area I'm going to just type that in or paste that in there now it doesn't really work straight off I have to do a bit of work um, which is not my favorite thing to do but we'll do that anyway 
So at the end of each of these lines, or some of these lines, I'm going to just press enter. And that's going to separate this down so that we get different lines of text all within the same place. So I'm just finding kind of full stops at the minute and punctuation and pressing enter until I get somewhere down the bottom. There we go. Now you can see that you know I've got more lines of text, but the size is wrong. So I need to take that right down. There we go. And I think perhaps we could take uh, any alf any shape alpha we've got in here, which we don't have. Excellent. So if I stamp that there, let's go to the master view first. There we go. I get some text, and I could just you know repeat that down. Um, you know anybody going in and reading this is probably uh, yeah not going to get too much or you know I could perhaps place it down twice and then go back to my generator generate a new paragraph and then do the same again so select it whoops don't really need to select it it's got a handy copy button and then pop back to painter go to my uh, alpha area and then replace the text in there and then I can go down and just add a few extra uh, carriage returns and that will give it a little bit of variation anyway there we go so I'll just perhaps size that down a little bit or up there we go somewhat along those lines. I'm just trying to fill the back with what looks like a bit of detail. Um, actually one thing I could do, I was just thinking about it, so I could rotate that round and pop that there. Perhaps rotate it back and pop it down the bottom and then uh, I was thinking that I could put some uh, something that looks a bit like a barcode down here and if I go to my, or clear my filter here, come on, clear, and go to there, there is something that looks vaguely like a barcode somewhere down here. There it is. Just make that a bit smaller. Pop that in. Maybe just a, a symbol or two. Uh, I think I saw a recycle style symbol somewhere uh, well let's pop a number one in there because obviously the best drink in the world and oh, i don't know i was thinking of putting a hazard warning on there just for fun but uh, perhaps not let's try this yeah just go nuts you know we just want it to look like somebody has deliberately printed something on there and you know it's information about the drink there we go so let's come back out of our mask and then on the paint layer uh, for the default one I'll set it to black there we go and have I got uh, yeah let's take some of these off I only really want roughness I'm going to increase the roughness a bit just to show that it's you know typed so that might be a bit much but you get the idea um, next then we'll come in and uh, perhaps make our very first design and then we'll export it um, take it into uh, blender and see if we need to make any adjustments so I'll talk to you then okay so let's uh, add a bit of uh, interest to this so below this layer, I'm going to add a color layer. So let's drag and drop that below there. And let's give this a little bit of um, color. So pick a color or a main color for your drink. Let's go limey green. Um, I have a bit of a problem in that. I, uh, I don't have it filtered. So let's uh, just 
do that quickly. So if I just duplicate this layer because it's got the right um, mask on and then in that layer I'll just delete those two things and now I've deleted more than I wanted to there. Ah, just the aluminium. There we go. And I'll drag and drop these onto that. That should do the job. Need this layer, which is my label text, above that layer. And there we go. Right, so now we have a bright lime green uh, can. This layer, I don't want any roughness on it. And or height or normal. Actually, we don't want anything at the moment except a bit of colour. So now we've got our uh, kind of metallic greeny colour. Uh, perhaps I want to vary that. Uh, so let's duplicate it. And then I'll change that to something a little more yellow. More yellow, less orange. There we go. Something like that. It's pretty close. And then I'll filter this uh, using a black mask with a fill layer and from my textures folder I've got this stripey one uh, which I'll drag and drop onto there. There we go, now we have a nice stripey drinks can uh, with yeah, uh, with what? Yeah, with stripes on it. <laughs> now this um, is causing me a bit of an issue at the seam there so I could change this uh, to sorry change this one up on its properties to a projection a triplanar projection and we should get a much better fit there'll be a bit of oddities that we're at the uh, edges where it uh, merges but yeah I think I can put up with that now one thing I do want to do is change this back bit so it's not stripey so let's have a go at that uh, so what I want to do we want to uh, duplicate this layer to start with I want to take these stripes out and simply put some sort of square in uh, so do we have a simple square we could use a gradient uh, we could use this gradient so I'm going to drag and drop that there and then switch to my mask view and now I can rotate this around 90 degrees and I want it to be a UV projection this time and now I can take that down to fit where I want it to fit now the uh, important thing here is that I want to take the repeating off so it's just going to appear it in an area so let's uh, go back to the material view and see what we're getting so I can adjust this just to fit around that area where I've defined that label there we go and of course we can change the colour to something a little less uh, brash uh, not black obviously let's go white and on our uh, gradient hopefully we can sharpen it up a bit so let's go there the gradient will change the balance and up the contrast just adjust that around until it fits quite nicely and that's something we might want to keep for all of it for all of our uh, labels so that you know they all look like that okay so what else can we do uh, I don't know if we could put some text on it so let's go above this layer add a brush layer change our alpha out for uh, a font alpha so one of the substances uh, so let's pick that one give it a name I'll just call it some hopefully that's you know 
generic and non-interesting. Let's call it uh, fresh. Oops. Let's rotate that around. Increase the size. If it doesn't go any further than you want it to go, you can change the size space to say object uh, or texture and then we can drop that down. Uh, I want a color on that of course. Let's go down to the color properties and this one we use, I don't know, a darkish green or perhaps a lightish orange. As I said, not a designer, no idea what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, and you could add you know additional details of you know icons and you know if you've got some uh, clip art of lemons and all that sort of stuff then you know feel free but this is our essentially first variant um and we're going to import this now uh, or we're going to go and import it into um blender and get it set up and see how we're looking so i'll talk to you then Okay, so let's uh, explore, and uh, I don't have a template set up, I think, with um, with the opacity on, so let's just do that. So export textures, I'm going to my output templates, and I've got this one set up for um, Metallic Roughness OpenGL, and all this is, is you see this normal uh, area has got this purple box next to it, and that refers to over here and that's referring to the OpenGL normal and if I go back to the metallic roughness one you'll see that that one is a different color it's this greeny color and that's referring to the DirectX GL <coughs> so if you don't have one set up uh, you can create a copy of the metallic roughness and then in the copy if you drag and drop uh, the OpenGL onto there and select RGB, you'll have the OpenGL channel there. Uh, so what else have I got here? Height and emissive. I'm not using emissive here, uh, but what I do want is opacity. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's find opacity. It should be down here somewhere. Uh, actually, it's being exported as part of the base color, but I want a new channel with that in. Uh, so opacity is just going to be uh, basically a grey map. So let's create a grey map and drag and drop opacity onto that, and we'll have it from opacity. Whoops, no, from the. Sorry, I clicked too fast. Let's drag and drop that on there, and I want that from the grey channel. There we go. And this one. If I copy this template here, take that grayscale off the front, so mesh texture, and then change emissive here to opacity. There we go. Opacity, not opacity. Oops, done it again. There we go. Okay, so. Uh, now I want to use this template, uh, but first I'm just going to take emissive off because I'm not going to use it. Uh, I'm not going to use height either, so let's take that off. Uh, but we will use color, roughness, metallic, normal, and opacity. There we go. Okay, so if I go back to settings now, I can pick my new copy here and set my values. Uh, so based on texture size, dilation plus diffusion uh, at 8. I need a directory, uh, which I have here. And for the uh, the can itself, I want all of these channels uh, because we remove the ones we don't. OK, so um, let us just do one change. I have a feeling that I ought to add out. It's all right. We'll just do we'll do it as it is so if i export those then open this directory we'll see that we've got all of our maps in here and i'll just move this up to one side a little bit 
and then in blender uh, I've removed the uh, the one we baked but I'm going to just drag that up and zoom in a little bit and then pull it over to one side so I can see my maps so I bring my color in so just drag and drop that onto the canvas I can plug that into the color base color there we go and I want uh, the metal the metal's not got anything on it at the moment um, it's just white so all metal but it may change in the future so I'm going to plug it in anyway and we have our roughness map which I'll pop into the roughness and we have our normal map which I'm going to pop into the colour there now it's important that you change the colour space here. You see the normal is has kind of ruined my picture. Um, that's because it's using the sRGB colour space and we need it to be using non-colour. And now it looks much more sensible. Excellent. Okay, so we have the opacity channel and we can use it as and when we want to. Uh, but I'm not going in for the minute. I'm quite happy with just having like a black hole on the top uh, to simulate that you know there's no light getting in it's really 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 dark okay so let's have a look at our thing I've not got a very nice uh, preview here really there we go so there's our can um, it might be a bit shiny it might be not sh yeah but I think it's okay it looks all right it certainly looks nice and smooth and I think that is essentially our first fresh variant that um, that we could use. I mean, it's not the final variant. It's not dirty in any way, shape or form. We need to dirty it up. But I just wanted, before we did that, to get it into Blender and see, you know, just how it looked. Okay, so next we'll add some, um, you know, dirt and such to it. And then we'll bring that in and, and see how that looks. So I'll talk to you then. Okay, so I want to add some general dirt and grime to this. So let me go up to the top. Uh, I've already started. <laughs> we delete that and I'll add a new layer there. Now, everything within this layer, I want to go everywhere except in this hole. So let me just add a black mask to that. And I want to reference our layer uh, that's got the hole in it, which is, I believe, this one if I turn it off yeah okay so if I right click here and add an anchor point um, we should be able to reference it from up here so let me add a fill layer and within that fill layer we'll reference that anchor point and the reference channel I want is opacity. Now there's a levels here, which I think I'm going to flip around on the output uh, because it's black in the output and I want it to be white. See, it's coming up white now. Let's go back uh, to here and look at the mask. There we go. So as it stands, that will only go on there. If I had this reversed, then it will go everywhere. So what I need to do is just flip those round. And with a bit of luck, if I right click and add a filter, and then just go down a little until I find invert, now it's the opposite way around. So now it's going to exclude the hole, but go everywhere else, which is perfect. So let's add a layer to that. Uh, la, la, what do I want to do? It's up here. I want to add a fill layer. And we'll add a generator. And not a generator. Sorry. We'll add a black mask. And then add the generator. And then we'll use, say, this dirt. There we go. Let's come off the opacity channel, shall we? Go back to material. And now we've got some general dirt all over the place. And that's fine. It's just kind of uh, messing up the surface. But 
it's all a little bit uniform and that's largely because we don't have much in the way of mesh maps to work with there's not much curvature um, it's quite localized in you know uh, the crevices and such like but you know it's, it's not really helping us very very much uh, one thing we could do is include this um, little indentation in it and we can do that by going down to our micro normal or even micro height in this case and reference the anchor point and go to the height channel uh, there we go and then we can go to micro details enable micro height and that should then include that in there uh, you should be able to see it I hope you can see it uh, and if I change my settings here we'll get more or less dirt depending upon the direction we go okay good so um, it's not very exciting so I want to add to this and for that I'm going to add in uh, a fill and then use a texture let's clear our filter there and what I want is something that's quite sparse uh, something like this if I drop that on top of there you'll see we get some more definite kind of features and if I change this blend to additive uh, linear dodge add we'll get both those in there so we get a little bit of extra so for the actual material uh, I'm gonna change this down to sort of a dirtyish color so let's go down to some sort of brown somewhere around there I think um, the height won't make a difference so let's turn the height off I'm going to turn the roughness right up because that's dirt it's rough you know it's coating and you know obscuring what's below it uh, we'll take metallic off and normal don't need opacity or emission there we go so now we have a dirty can which is fine and if I go to my grunge texture here I'll perhaps change this to a triplanar to avoid any oddities around the seam areas there we go you can also change the scale if you wanted to down or up I think actually at somewhere around one it's fine what else have we got we can change our balance and contrast uh, we can increase the tiling and we could even rotate it if we want to there we go okay so that's our kind of first variant all me messed up <coughs> I could put an additional layer of uh, dirt across this uh, let's try that uh, so for that actually I'm going to use a material uh, and we'll use rust I didn't mean to do that where's that gone oh it's gone onto the brush okay so I'll create a new layer and then select the rust and for this one uh, we'll add a black mask and we'll add a generator and for the generator perhaps we'll go uh, to metal edges now there we go and now we've got a much dirtier rusty edges as well as our kind of dirt all around and you can adjust these you you know you can go and say well that that's too uh, too you know intense so I could take the some of the saturation out of it perhaps uh, we could even change you know, the colour as a whole and do what you want uh, and you can even break it up if we add a fill between those again I'll go and find a texture uh, on a grunge uh, a sparse grunge so something that's a bit spotty this one may be good so that's spreading it uh, in other places but taking it you know off there if you want to add them 
go to dodge add and that will do the job uh, or you could subtract it and that will break up the the rust on those edges so it's not you know 100% rust <coughs> excuse me okay so there we go and you could build up as many of those as you like uh, I should change this to uh, project uh, a triplanar just to avoid any seam issues there okay right so that's that uh, next one I'm just going to re-export these and then we'll see what it looks like in uh, Blender and then uh, I think you know as, as creating like the basis up that's about it um, we'll go on to make the variants in the next couple of video sections so I'll talk to you then Okay, so let's re-export these. So export textures. We've got the same uh, settings as we used before to the same directory. And we'll just hit export again. And this is going to overwrite the ones we did previously. If I go to my directory there, you can see that it's done them. So let's go back into Blender. So within Blender, I believe it's still picking up the old items that's fine just select your item uh, go to the little drop down menu there and then image and reload just need to do that on these other ones I could possibly do it um, you know <laughs> a bit more uh, sensibly than that but or a bit quicker perhaps so I can multiple select I'm not sure I think this is perhaps the only one that hasn't actually changed image reload There we go. Okay, so that's what our can looks like now, and that looks much nicer, I think. Uh, well, it looks much more dirty, that's for sure. Um, but it looks a bit more like trash, which is what I was trying to say. <laughs> so, look at it in the fully rendered mode. There we go. It looks properly beat up and nasty, and we could throw that all over the place. So that's essentially creating our first variant. Um, but this is the first variant of a texture uh, we want to create variants in models as well and that's what the next video set will be about uh, but that's the end of this one um, and when we come back and do that new set we'll start mashing the models about and making different versions okay so I will talk to you then